guys ready to say goodbye? No! Well, that's what we're here to do, so get used to it. What a weird, wild, wonderful time to do a show. Thanks for coming here. I know it's, you know, it's not what we would all have chosen, but here we are, so let's choose this moment. What do you say? Um, and uh, I got friends and family here. I'm looking out of the audience and know just about everybody, it seems. And uh, just glad you're here. And we figured we wanted to do this when we started talking about that the band was going to end. We said, we have to do a show where we get as many of the former band members who've ever been in Tenth Ave and try to get them all here at one show. And we have, I think, 13 of the 15 people who've ever been in Tenth Ave is here tonight. So uh, we figured the best way to do tonight is give you a total history lesson of Tenth Avenue North. Who's ready for a history lesson? Okay. So 10th Avenue North began, I would say, the fall of 1998. Funky tunes, you know any funky tunes? Because we're going to play for all these people at the coffee house. And Brian's like, I think I know this one. did something right. So we called ourselves Frabble Rock. It was our first band name. Yep. And I remember we got to uh, Battle of Bands. We are like, we have to write an original song for this. And my friend Mark Zimmer, who later joined the band, you're going to meet him in a little bit, he was teaching me jazz chords. And I was like, whoa, what are these new fancy chords? So it's like, Joseph and Selena are here tonight, and they join 10th Avenue North. Give it up to Joseph Smith and Selena Beasley. Would you guys like to say hello to the, the crowd? We could not be more honored to be here, be a part of your farewell. <laughs> so it's your farewell, too. This is your band, too. They don't know you, but it is. And my roommate at the time was obsessed with Revelation. And he's like, the revelation of God says in the end times there will be two end time witnesses. So for this youth, this youth conference, we called ourselves End Time Witness. This <laughs> <laughs> is so it's very unfortunate. And all the kids started going, play the galaxy song, play the galaxy song. And uh, it, it was a song called God of Wonders. And uh, so what do you say we sing it? Because this was our hit at the youth conference. Are you ready to do this, Jeff? Gonna try it. Come on, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. Get a moment. There you go. There you go. I can't even plug it in right. <laughs> you just you were plugged in right. You're just not muted. No. You're good. It wasn't in the tree. All right, let's start. Here we go. Sorry. Oh. 
Let's welcome out Mr. Mark Zimmer. Mark plays every instrument on the planet, including the flute. So, so keep at it, boys and girls, right? Not in the fire, though, or in the earthquake. My soul shakes for you when I humbly called your name. How you softly came in a gentle whisper. Jennifer Knapp at Palm Beach Atlantic University, and the opener was a girl named Kate Hudson, who later changed her name to Katie Perry. And Mark, you want to tell them the story? Tell them the story. This girl, she's like, she's like 15. Katie Perry's 15 at times. She doesn't know how to change her own guitar strings. So Mark starts changing the guitar strings. I'll change the guitar strings. And then, and then <laughs> he literally changed her guitar strings. Okay, and uh, and you like. S like gave her some prophetic word. Like, I, I felt, I felt like the Lord gave me something to, to share with her, and I just, I took that moment and did. He's telling her, like, God's got a plan for you, da 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 da, yeah. and she starts crying, like backstage. So, I'm sure. 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 so then, so we're like, we're, we are awesome. We just, we just played for Jennifer Knapp. We're winning battle of the bands, and then Selena goes, guys, I'm too good to be in this band. I quit. <laughs> She said, I quit. Although I did think I, I did think I quit over like an email, which I'm sorry. I don't think I ever said I'm sorry about that. And then Mark, we get back, we're like, you ready? We get back over the summer, like, Mark, you ready to go tear up the church youth group? It's gonna be awesome, it's so great. And you're like, actually, bro, I just came back from Brazil and God's calling me missions full time, so peace. <laughs> and Mark quit, talking around campus, who can we get to join our band? And, uh, and then we remember there was this guy who competed against us <laughs> and lost. <laughs> but, uh, he's pretty good. And his name was Drew Middleton. Drew, come on out, bro. <laughs> so I, I love the people who only joined us, joined like being a fan of 10th Ave recently. You're like, who are all these people? Um, I'm just gonna have Drew, I'm gonna have Drew sing this song because we later recorded this song and to this day, people request me to sing it. I'm like, sorry guys, ain't me. It's this guy. So uh, give it up, Drew Middleton, playing the 10th Avenue song called Game of Roots. Well, if you only knew the pain that I've been through, since when did it become all about you? As you can see right from the start, I said, Truth. But if the truth means nothing to you, then what am I supposed to do? Will I still love you beyond what words can say? I'll take your every suffering moment and bring a better day. Yeah, I'll still love you more than what I hope to be. Let me wrap my arms around That was later on, I wanted to change the name from 10th Avenue North to formerly, as in formerly 10th Avenue North. <laughs> Didn't happen. I still think it's a good band name. But uh, we ended up saying 10th Avenue North because we couldn't agree on anything else. And we were pulling off to band practice and it was like, how about 10th Avenue North? No. And everyone went, oh, we'll change it later. And we never did. We're still stuck with it. 
But not after these two shows, baby. <laughs> By the way, I know some of you guys, when are you gonna get to the radio singles? They're coming, they're coming. Just imagine that we're opening up for ourselves, okay? <laughs> so instead of having an opener, can do it. Yeah. I mean, otherwise you have an opener out here playing songs you don't know. Now you just have us playing songs you don't know, okay? So, <laughs> uh, and Danny Zayas, you guys. Yeah, okay, so, now listen, this guy, Donnie, you might have noticed he slipped in and then slipped out, and we did that on purpose because Donnie had this habit of all the bands on campus, he would just like sneak into the band and then sneak out of it, and he would like, and on this thing, he goes, oh, I hear you guys are going out for the summer. He goes, I can get you gigs in Denver, Colorado. And we said, you're in. And he goes, so Danny was in the band five, six years. He started on the summer tour, because he was playing for the student ministries at Christ Fellowship. And like, this guy, this kid can play every instrument. I was the like, kid in the band, I was the kid. You were the kid. You were like 16, 16 17. You were 17. Did we have to get a parental consent for him to take you on tour? And so at that point, Danny and Drew, I don't want to put words in your mouth here, you're like, they just got married, they're like, hey, I think we got a good thing going, but we out. Is that essentially what happened? And I remember you and I sitting in my living room, I'm like, well, man, it's just the two of us. It's back to the two of us again. Uh, and I remember a really good conversation, it's like, man, I feel like God's still doing something, and if you want to keep going, I'll keep going. You gonna keep going? I'll, I'll, if you go. I mean, I'll keep going. You keep going. Let's go. Okay, right, let's keep going. Yeah, but we didn't have it. We didn't have it. It's like, well, it's just us. So maybe we should get some more players. And our friend Scott. Scott is uh, one of the two people who couldn't make it tonight. He's living in New York City. He's working and doing tech stuff and marketing and all kinds of awesome stuff. And he couldn't make it. But um, the other guy who replaced Drew and Danny was uh, this kid who had actually filled in a little bit for us from time to time, and his name is Jeff Owen. So give it up for Mr. Jeff Owen. And Jeff, Jeff heard this little ditty that we were working on, this little Love Is Here song, and he said, I think you got something there. Let me put a little Jeff sauce on it. And so, as we couldn't quite get the song right, it wasn't quite, it just wasn't jelly. We knew we had a good like idea. You're butchering the story right now. Look, we were struggling with this song. You remember at, the, at a church in Boynton, maybe? Yes, First Baptist of Boynton Beach. We were like, we, after like three hours, we were like, we need to move on. And I was noodling. And you were like, that's it. 
Guy Patterson. If you've seen that thing you do. And you were like, that needs to go on this. And we're all like, that doesn't fit. But I guess it did, so. Oh, okay, yeah, who's starting this? <laughs> Come to the water, you who thirst, you'll thirst no more. Come to the Father, you who work, you will work no more. the melody. song that wasn't on the radio that we've ever had. And what's crazy is I literally wrote the chorus of the song when I was crying, which is why the chorus ended up being I'm not kidding. It's really why that's the chorus of the song. I know I need you I need to love you Lord I'd love to see but it's been so long I long to feel you I feel this need for you And I need to hear you It is 
there so wrong? All right, you guys gotta help me sing. Oh, 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 Still I'm afraid to tell you all that I've done Are you done forgiving? Can you look past my pretending? Lord, cause I'm so tired of defending What I've become What have I become? Yeah
guys. We grew a beard. We're looking all debonair. Uh, yeah, I had a buddy who was friends with Jeff and his wife Heather, and uh, you guys are going on a on a canoeing trip for Fourth, Fourth of July. July. Yep. This was like in 2008, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. We and, met him on a canoeing trip. Yes. Yeah. So I had a buddy who was invited by them. So that's how we met. It's a really enjoyed it, man. And, uh, and we just wrote this record called Light Meets the Dark. Anybody a fan of that record? Yeah! And uh, we realized that we had written all these keys parts all over this record, and we did not have a piano player. Mm -hmm. And so we went, guys, we're going to play this live. We got asked to open up for Casting Crowns. And we Woo! said, we, we need a piano player. So we had the first like formal, formal audition for 10th Avenue. You see how many people have been in the band so far? Yeah. And the first formal audition was for Brendan Shirley. And we had like five guys audition and Brendan far surpassed them all. And that's when Brendan Shirley joined the band, everybody. Yeah. She starts telling me, well, I have this one secret, but I can't tell you because I promised myself I wouldn't tell anyone except the man that I marry. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I just like, no, I can't tell you, I can't tell you. I was like, please tell me, please tell me, I want to marry you, please tell me. And um, anyway, hours go by, and then she finally, finally, finally tells me this big old bad dark secret. And uh, she's, and I, go, I, I remember her telling me what it was. You remember this, babe? And I go, oh, she's not in here. Oh, there she is. And uh, I, I said, that's it? And she looks back and she goes, what do you mean? That's, yeah. I was like, I just thought, like, you assassinated JFK. Like, you really want to this up. And um, I just watched. This, this, like, visual, physical thing happened when she got that secret out in the open and then wasn't met with Jimmy Fallon, you know, yeah, yeah, like, but was met with, is that all you got? Like, don't you, haven't you heard these stories about Jesus and the power of his blood? Don't you know that the blood of Jesus is stronger than the worst of your sin? And like, when that happened, there's this verse in James, it says, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other that you might be healed. I always thought that's interesting 
And a lot of people say they're talking about like physical signs and wonders healings. But I wonder if James also means, hey, when you believe in Jesus and confess to Jesus, you get forgiven. But when you actually confess to another person and they finally tell you what you longed would be true, because when you talk to God, it's kind of like a fairy tale. But when you talk to someone else, it gets real, real quick. And they look at you and they confirm your deepest hope. That's all you got. There's a healing that happens when we confess to one another. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Will you finally came to the door and we talked for an hour or more and I asked if you would stay up till four you said that's fine but you said there's something I have to say and I can't because I'm just so afraid and so I held you as you started to shake that night Till the tears have left your eyes, till the fear.
apologize to and everything. You see, Jesus people, we need the people who dig in our heels and wait for people to come grovel. We're the people who take the first step toward reconciliation. <laughs>
know the one you need. And the one you need, guess what? He doesn't need you. He wants you. I hope that lets you off the hook. I hope you feel the pressure coming off your shoulders. I hope you feel all burdens lift. That God doesn't come to you because he needs you. He comes to you because he wants you. You don't have to have anything to offer him but you. All your junk, all your hang-ups, all your addictions. He never stops wanting. Thanks for coming out today, guys. I was going to go into the verse right there, but I started crying, so I'm going to have to wait until it comes back. y'all are willing to come and do your part and can we just give it up for Northland um, but uh, someone asked in the Q&A do you guys want to say anything uh, we got time we'll, we'll say all the crying for time but uh, uh, do you want to say anything I asked you a question and didn't wait for you to respond oh I'm sorry you go, were you sleeping no no I was like, it's like, it's like tape that like a giant black mole in my arm. <laughs> I just fell into the So, yeah, I was a little distracted. But... I was like, oh, I'm going to go in there this entire time. It's one of the most classic Jeff things you could have said right there. <laughs> we let his grace just wash over things. The very things we regret the deepest, those dark strokes, those mistakes, God has a way of adding a little paint to it, and suddenly it becomes our favorite part of the paint. If we let it. So just let it. Whatever regret you have in your life, I pray you just say, God, what are you going to do with this? Because he specializes in turning regret into redemption. Amen? Amen. And uh, that's been the story of our day. We have done so many things wrong. The fact that there's a, a room full of people who care about the music we made, all I can say is that is the grace of God. Because uh, we are a mess. We're a hot mess. And, uh, 
So we're gonna do one last song. This is called Greater Than All My Regrets. Thanks for coming out, you guys. This is gonna be a fun and tomorrow night we shall rage like we've never raged. When the past it comes to haunt me, it tells me what I've done, and it reminds me what's gone wrong. Yeah. When my sins are laid before me, my Lord, you take them on.